Lek and Greg Vegan Camp, the 29th of June 2019. Next nice fruit is longan. Longan season in August. Papayas all year round, but most mostly in the rainy season. This is the avocado, doing quite well. This is something new that Lek is applying. She, she will cut the banana, it will shoot again, and it will not grow as tall. Everything is more manageable. The last two pineapples. This one will be picked today. Sweet bamboo growing. Sweet bamboo shoots steamed, very nice. Steamed or boiled. Also all these are sweet bamboo. Cavendish bananas, some of them survived from the last time but almost the drought almost destroyed them. We are also planting a lot of cassava on near the fence to support the fence. Maybe make the, <laughs> replace the fence with cassava instead. The large bamboo here for building stuff. What's up, Ima? Huh? Trying to find more papayas near the fence. These cactus dragon fruits. The four very narrowly planted pineapples. In some areas, the the pineapples are, aren't producing yet. But if you plant them like very narrowly, it's also not so probable that they will produce. But uh, let's see what happens. Avocado compost. Collection of bamboo, pumpkin. I moved some uh, orange jackfruit from behind the bathroom and I'm curious to see if they will survive or not. Try to make uh, some mulch, mulchy stuff from the old hut. Yeah, the old hut that crashed down. It was first a hut, then a storage, then a mulch, then soil and then food for humans. Come from soil, we become soil. I guess some of them will will survive, but it's so dry here in the rainy season. We need more rain. Pumpkin has been planted everywhere among the mangoes. And the mangoes, as you can see, they have been pruned and all the mangoes have been picked and frozen and dried and eaten bit more organized storage compared to last time but yeah the storage still needs some work more shelves more hangers and stuff like that beans have been planted so they're coming now we need to put some mulch under and the neighbor is growing corn or starch and also started to growing mango so we'll have a ton of mango but unfortunately not organic. Maybe one day organic. And the idea is to apply some permaculture stuff to these pumpkins. So we just try to keep the moisture in the soil by adding mulch under the, the pumpkins around here. So there are like two really very important reasons by doing this. Keeping the moisture inside and also preventing the weed cutters to uh, not to cut the pumpkin because it can be hard to spot the pumpkin if the uh, they're overgrown with with weed is it called weed or weeds you can probably say both in english so fantastic another example of pumpkin mulch pumpkin this one is even starting to shoot a, a string out which makes it even more complicated to to take care of the weed you can apply permaculture principles but Pumpkin is not a permaculture plant, it's like produces and dies. Unless, of course, you leave pumpkin in the field. Some of the pumpkin will have seeds and the seeds will just stay in the soil and will produce again. So that could be permaculture. But when we harvest everything because we want to eat the pumpkin, and then it's not so much permaculture. For me, permaculture is that you can apply something to a piece of land and then you can leave it and it will just grow forever and you don't need to do anything about it so and that's my definition of permaculture but you can make a mix you can apply some things you want from permaculture 
and then you can have a mix of gardening, farming, permaculture, whatever. This has not been de-weeded yet. Nice patch of beans. And the other neighbors also growing mango, but I've seen them cut the, the wheat with a wheat cutter. So maybe they're also trying to go as organic as possible. And this mango has been completely pruned, but it's starting to shoot anyway. And there's a little thing here attached, uh, probably a Nam Dog Mai thing, but I am not sure why doing that so low on the stem. I have no idea why they're doing it. If you know why this is being done, please let me know. We're also trying to make the lizards, the house geckos, move away from the house. Uh, we have tried to spray with a mix of the lemongrass that is used for, for mosquitoes as a mosquito repellent. Like the, the lemongrass, the chili, some tobacco and some galanga to make it like a powerful mix of like a powerful smell. I think maybe it helped a little bit, but not really. So if you have um, a secret of how to make the house geckos move away from the house, that would be great. All the poop and pee and stuff like that in the house is not so nice. And the bees have left the last beehive. This is the only unpopulated beehive we have left in the garden currently. Wow, look at the avocado. This is part of completely dead. When it turns dark, black, then it dies. But when you go down, you see that it's actually shooting a new avocado down from the roots. I think it realized, okay, this one the big one is dead, so I need to survive somehow and shoot a new one. That's amazing. Yeah, we're really stubborn. We, we still try to grow durian here. The young, small papaya are giving fruit. And the slogan in Thai, we grow what we eat and eat what we grow. Parts of our fence we eat. Now we even have a scarecrow. A lot of longans on that longan tree. I think that longan is producing that well because it has access to a lot of water compared to many of the others. The mini orange jackfruit forest. Put a lot of orange jackfruit seeds here. Passion fruit. Too late for the papayas. Unable to keep up with the bananas. There are so many. And that's why we bake some of them in the oven. Cassava, young cassava shoots that we can curry or steam or whatever. 